Although that does limit your choices somewhat, you may end up with quite a few sagging faces. I will never understand why you have so readily accepted aging or digestion. They are frightful pastimes. Uh, up to a point, certainly. They are frightfully loud, but the selection afterwards is quite good. The faces are often what you might call fixer-uppers, but they're young and quite serviceable, if you get them before the flies do. Poison is preferred, of course. No marks to the face, the subject can be of any age, and death is often quite peaceful. Not for them, of course, but it's significantly more relaxing for me. Indeed, so I gathered from your earlier prattling. I also met someone. Oh no, she was a god, by your standards. When I wore flesh, I knew her as the Lady Armadia. She was one of the seven lords that served our king. Naturally, they acted as any lords would. They bowed to their king and sneered at their lessers. And there was an awful lot of sneering, even back then. One can only imagine how much there is now. Yes, well, if you are quite finished wasting my time, I believe we have some business to get on with. Now is not the time for a bath. All that fighting will be worth less than nothing if we can't get this tub moving. Melody says if we can get the ship to move, we can... Team up, you and me. What do you say? Eh, suit you. He drags a comb through his beard. His. Did you hear? We're bringing you to Meister Siva, the head of the Seekers. If, if we can get out of here, that is. I was just getting used to this seafaring life. You know, we could... Ah, 
Ready. We probably get tired of this view. There you are. Off we go, then. So close. We have to set sail. Nothing on any of the dead bodies. Maybe there's something below decks.
Magister Randy Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel, Lady Vengeance. Can't you say anything else? Bloody Magister. A young Magister paces around the brig, fussing over Alexander's unconscious form. She notices you observing her. She straightens her back and sets her jaw. Magister Randy, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you lot. So, Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the... The Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. The Magister's stare hardens... Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the divine... If it were up to me, you'd be swinging from the end of a rope, not locked up in here. Spotted something. Oh, this is heinously unfair. Speak to me if you're looking for hired help. Oh, I see you have a full... There's something to these doors I'm not seeing. But what? There's got to be another way to get it going, but we can't find a way into Dallas's room. The door seems like any door, at least at first. Then you notice it's unblemished wood. There is no knot, no scratch, no dent to detract from its apparent perfection. The wood groans and creaks. For a moment, you swear a face appears in the wood. A face tortured and tormented, a six-sided shape carved upon its forehead. The face vanishes. The anguished face appears, then vanishes. The door remains... The door remains unmarked. The thud of your fist upon the wood resonates deeper than you'd expected it to. The door seems like any door, at least the wood groans and the face vanishes. The door stays resolutely closed. My, my. Look what the ship's cat dragged in. You were on that luckless lot of timber that met with one tentacle too many. Weren't you? Oh, but you've come a long way. Just as I have. Rather boring, sometimes, to travel by oneself. We could. By all means, think. I'm not going anywhere. The Seeker flexes her arms stiffly. Her joints audibly pop. She sees... I owe you, Godwoken. <laughs> Without your help... She nods her thanks and immediately winces, laying her hand on the back of her neck. Good luck getting anything out of either of them. 
Our special guest is out cold, and the other one ain't in much of a talking mood. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel. The Seeker has removed. You must be starved for company to linger around here, friend. I wish. No. The Magisters kept me chained to the bulkhead. Arms held above me head, feet barely able to touch the deck. Now my joints are paying the price. Or a big bloody target on our backs. We took their leader and their flagship. The hammer won't stand for that. She'll be hunting for us. No. They had us down below, chained up in the dark. But the Reds were up to something in here. Maybe it was just the lack of food and rest playing tricks, but oh, I swear I heard chanting and ugh, horrible moaning coming from here. But when we broke free, it was empty. The Seeker throws a toxic look at the imprisoned Magister. Hardly, she's just some deckhand. If it were up to me, I'd tie her to the main mast and use her for arrow practice. But Malady wants her alive for now. You and half of Rivalon, friend. But no, he hasn't made a sound. He'll be in for a rude awakening when he does come to. All right then, just don't make me regret it. Hope you find something useful. Magister Ranley, Cork. Get away from him, sorcerer. That's prisoner or not. I swore an oath. Hope you find something useful. Magister Ranley. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel. Quite right. Why sail for the main? Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the... I warned you not to touch it.
keep an eye on the red until the cage is locked again. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence vessel. Magister Ranley, Corker's. Hope you find something useful. until the cage is locked again. Hope you find something useful. <laughs> I ought to chain you up like your lot did to me. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Div. Get away from him, sorcerer. That's the di- All right. Don't harm him. I'll be watching. If Anne grabs you by the sleeve, not hard, but insistent. Let me work on him. I've got questions that need answers. Answers I can only get from him. If Anne approaches Alexander, who lies flat on a bare wire cot, Though unconscious, Alexander's eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. If Anne grabs him by the jaw and shakes violently, Alexander's face contorts with agony and his eyes flutter, yet he doesn't return to consciousness. Why did you trigger the death fog before the elves had a chance to escape? Why? Why? No matter how loud If Anne shouts his questions, there is no response from the unconscious Alexander. He reaches his arm back, and you realize he intends to punch Alexander in the face. If Anne's fist connects with Alexander's cheekbone, and you hear the stomach-curdling crack of bone, blood streams from Alexander's nose, yet he stirs not at all. Without a word, If Anne strides away. Bishop Alexander lies supine on a bare wire cot. Though unconscious, his eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. Someone has wiped the bishop's hands clean and folded them neatly over his abdomen. They rise and fall in shallow, jagged swells. Bruises swell beneath his eyes, and a shallow gash zigzags from his right ear down to his beardless cheek. Unconscious, he looks more boy than bishop. A beautiful six-sided gem rests on the bishop's chest, hung round his neck by an ordinary oiled rope. The gem sits heavily in your pouch. The seeker has removed... You must be starved for company to linger around here, friend. Don't worry. 
As soon as she changes her tune, you'll know about it. Allowed, please use the port side door. Listen up so I don't have to repeat myself again. I am not. The door remains unmarked. The anguished face appears once more. It dips its forehead towards you and waits. A shudder of pleasure racks the figure in the door. It seems to breathe. All of a sudden, all anguish is gone. It gives you the sternest of looks. I am summoned. Speak the password. You've summoned me with the gem, indeed. Now, the password. No. Summoned. Speak the password. No. The human mind is as simple as it is stubborn. This is the stateroom. Authorized personages only. This is the... Again, I say, speak how very unfortunate for you, and how... No. The human... I'll keep an eye on the red until the cage is locked again. A young Magister paces around the bridge. She notices you observing her. She Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence Vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the... The Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. The Magister's stare hardens. Magister Ranley, Corker's. Magister Ranley. A young Magister paces. She notices you. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the Divine Eminence Vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you lot. So stow your questions. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the. The Magister falls silent, but stares. The Magister's... Magister Ranley. A young Magister... She knows... Magister Ranley. Corker's mate at the divine... Ranley. Corker's mate. Lady Vengeance. Magister Ranley. Corker's mate of the... The Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. There's a shift in the Magister's expression. A I'm a good Magister. Loyal. But Dallas. Something about her has changed. She's toying with dark magic, like a common sorcerer. She used to... to sing to the ship. It let her control it. She had this old book of hymns and incantations. It was only ever in her hands, or else locked away in her cabin at the stern. That's all I know. Oh, this is heinously un... You spoke, didn't you? The Magister leans in and whispers... If you ever find yourself face to face with Magisters, you tell them I was tortured. I didn't betray the cause. You spoke, didn't you? Ha! I knew you would eventually. You 
You can put a price on the warriors I have for hire, but you can't put a price on the glory they'll win you. Let's team up you and eh, so he drags a Did you hear? We're bringing you to Meister Siva, the head of the Seekers. If if we can get out of here, that is. Did you hear? We're bringing you to Meister Siva, the head of the Seekers. If... if we can get out of here, that is. This boat's a treasure. Dallas wouldn't know what to do with her. The silent monk cocks...
find rest. There you are. Oh, this is Dallas's ship. But she can't have been... There's a way to move this ship on board, I'm sure of it. You'd be surprised. The figurehead has certainly caused a commotion lately. But then again, so have the doors downstairs. Everywhere you look, a hunk of wood, please don't... From Don't go any further, Godwoken. We need you alive. I know what's at stake, but I have to warn you. This ship is alive and dangerous. She glances over towards a smoldering pile of ash on the deck nearby. Something is nestled within it. Fragments of scorched bone. That was Brendan. When the ship wouldn't answer my call, he touched the figurehead. And it attacked him, without warning. He burned, like he was made of parchment. Nothing. The ship is live wood, that much is clear. But I couldn't communicate with it. The Magisters must have done something, warped it somehow. I just don't know what. She sighs. I know. Just be careful. Her eyes flick over to the smouldering ashes once again, her head held at a despondent angle. Thank you. We were held captive together on this ship. He kept my spirits up. Now he's dead. 